Hi everyone and welcome to the next lesson in this series on AWS Fundamentals. So today I'll be teaching you about a new service called Amazon EC2. Now with Amazon EC2 we can actually go ahead and create our own virtual service which we call in the cloud EC2 instances. Okay so this is really exciting so let's get straight to it. So first of all you want to search for the service EC2 which stands for Elastic Compute Cloud and we can go ahead and bookmark this here. So virtual service in the cloud. Perfect. Now let's open the service. Okay. And this is our dashboard. So we can see uh, things such as our instances, uh, elastic IPs, key pairs, placement groups, snapshots, volume, security groups, load balancers, instances, dedicated hosts. And there's a lot here. Okay. But let's start simple. So what we want to do is we want to click here where it says instances running. Now we don't have any instances running, but we want to click on that for a particular reason. And that is because we want to launch an instance. So we want to launch an EC2 instance. So we can click on this here. Okay, great. So we are using the a new experience here. So let's close this. And the first thing you need to do is you need to name your server, your virtual server. So here I'm going to call it my first uh, EC2 instance. Okay, so you can give it any name that you wish. Next, we need to choose sort of like an operating system, you could say, which we call in um, AWS uh, and AMI. So an Amazon machine image or a base OS image. Now, the one that we should choose to make sure that we're in the free tier is the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. Okay, next we can scroll down, make sure that you're under the free tier and that you're using the 64-bit architecture here. Uh, we need to go and set an instance type. So this will be the size of our virtual server. So in this case, we are going to use the T2 Micro instance, which is under the free tier. So make sure you don't choose anything that is greater than, the, greater than this, okay? Because you're going to pay, and trust me, it costs a lot of money. So we're just going to have one virtual CPU and one gig memory attached to this uh, virtual server of ours. Next thing we need to do is we need to generate a key pair. So with a key pair, we can actually connect to our EC2 instance. Now, one of the perks of generating a key pair is we can actually go ahead and connect to our EC2 instance via SSH. Okay, so this is one of the, the main reasons why we need this key pair. So we need to say uh, create new key pair. You can name your key pair. I'm going to say my uh, KP for my key pair. So name it accordingly for yourselves. Uh, we can set it to RSA and under private key file format, okay, we're going to use .ppk, okay, since we're going to utilize the PuTTY client to connect to our EC2 instance. And the reason I'm using ppk is because I am using a Windows operating system, so bear that in mind. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our key pair. Okay, it's been created, so my KP ppk perfect so make sure you have it there and in a safe place okay next we need to look at our network settings so we're going to use the default um what do you call it the default vpc okay uh, we're going to auto assign a public ip and now we need to set our firewall which is our security group set a few rules up here so basically, a security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for our instance. So simply put, our security group is going to control all of the traffic that goes into our EC2 instance and all of the traffic that comes out of our EC2 instance. So we can see this as input, inbound traffic and outbound traffic. So we would need to go ahead and create a security group, which is going to be called Launch Wizard 1. Now, this security group, okay, will allow SSH traffic, okay, from... Uh, from anywhere, okay? And what we also need to make sure is that we allow HTTP traffic from the internet. Now, if we do not set up this endpoint here, we won't be able to actually connect to our EC2 instance once it becomes available to us. So make sure that you have the following checkboxes checked because if we don't allow SSH traffic, we won't be able to use our uh, .pp, uh, .ppk file to SSH into our EC2 instance and connect to it remotely. So make sure this is checked and ensure that you allow HTTP traffic so we can actually connect to our uh, EC2 instance via an IPv4 address. Okay, so make sure you have the following. All right, great. So we can leave this as default. Uh, we need to click here on advanced details and scroll right to the bottom until you see user data. So when 
uh, we launch our EC2 instance, I want it to show a bit of information. Okay, so I've created sort of a script here. Okay, that you can see here. Don't worry, I will attach this in the description below um, so that you can uh, just copy and paste this as the following. So this is just a simple script that's going to run some uh, some basic code uh, once we launch our EC2 instance. So the basic idea here is going to just show hello from the other side. Okay, so that's all just going to output here and the internal uh, host name. Okay, so that's what's going to happen here. Okay, perfect. Now what we can actually do is I'm going to just edit this out here actually. I think I'll take the host name out. I don't want to confuse you guys too much. So let's keep it simple. So I'm just going to say echo hello from the other side. Okay, so we'll keep it simple here. Okay, great. This is fine. We're just going to generate one EC2 instance, one virtual server. Our um, base OS, OS image is set to Amazon Linux 2. Our virtual server is a T2 micro, and we are creating a new security group, which as we can see from above, if we go back, is going to allow HTTP traffic from the internet and allow SSH traffic, all right, from anywhere. Okay, so let's scroll down now, and we can launch our EC2 instance. Okay, so let's launch it. Okay, there we go, it's launched. Now we can go to instances, and we can see that specific instance that we named, my first EC2 instance, is currently in a pending state. And it does take a bit of time. So make sure that it shows available. Okay. And then what you want, oh, running, sorry. You make sure it shows running. And what you want to do is you want to wait for about a minute for everything to propagate and to set up properly. Now, even though it says available, it does take a while. So I would recommend waiting until the status check is done. So usually it will say two out of two. So I would recommend waiting until that is all set and ready to go. Okay, so until this status check is ready, I'm going to pause the video. And once it's done, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to connect to your EC2 instance. So let's just wait for this status uh, check. All right, so let's just wait. All right, so after about five minutes or so, I just refreshed here and I can see that the status check has passed, so two out of two. So make sure that that status check is all set and ready to go because you're going to have some connectivity issues if you don't. So there are many ways you can connect to EC2 instance. The way that I prefer is to click on the checkbox here and to actually open this IPv4 address here. So I can just open this in a new tab. Okay, and you want to double click in it and you want to just remove this S here and remove it to HTTP. And there we go, hello from the other side. So we are now connected to our EC2 instance, okay, via this, the following endpoint with HTTP, okay. Now, if you are unsure of how to do what I just did, okay, what you can also do is you can just copy this here, copy this IPv4, and just remove the following. So you can just take this out. Okay, and you can just paste it in manually, the IPv4 address, if you are struggling to just do what I did. Now, the reason I do what I did by opening the address, all I do is I remove the S from HTTPS because we did not enable in our security group to be able to connect to this EC2 instance with HTTPS. We set the endpoint as HTTP, so that is the reason of what I did earlier. But what you can do manually, like I said, is just copy this, your IPv4 address and just paste it in the URL and you will see that you're connected to your EC2 instance. Okay, so that's it, very simple and straightforward. Okay, so that's how you would connect, how you would create an EC2 instance, a virtual server, and how you would actually connect to one. Okay, so very simple, very basic. All right, so let's look at how we would end this uh, EC2 instance. So we can click on it here, and we can actually go to our instance state option here. So this is drop down menu. So we can either stop the instance, reboot the instance, start the instance, hibernate the instance, or terminate the instance. Now, it's a good rule of thumb on AWS or generally anywhere, anything that you don't use, make sure that you terminate it. So in this case, it's running, so I don't want to use this anymore, so I'm going to click on it here, go to instance state, and I'm going to terminate the instance. Okay, it's just going to come up with a warning here about EBS, we won't go into that. So just be sure to terminate your EC2 instance. 
and you can see there it's shutting down. So make sure you see the shutting down notification or the shutting down message to double check that it's actually shutting down because you do not want things running for longer than they should be because this turns into a horrible habit. Okay, so that's it on creating our first EC2 instance. I hope you like it and found it insightful. So thank you guys.